You're listening to Thursday Night AMP on the Angry Marks Podcast Network. Just the two of us, Stevie J and Killa Kev. What's up, Kevin? Not much. You say that now, but actually there's quite a bit going on in the world of wrestling and mixed martial arts today, starting with the news that Perry Saturn is apparently going to be homeless in a few days unless he has a successful GoFundMe campaign. He's got huge medical bills. He's got no savings. He's in a world of trouble right now. And the question on my mind, which I think is on the mind of a lot of wrestling fans who saw this news come out, is how does this keep happening to wrestlers over and over again? We just recently went through this trying to help Sabu out, and now Perry Saturn is in the exact same bind. Right. I I don't understand why he's racking up huge medical bills, you know, unless these are like really old bills. I mean, he he lives in what, Minnesota? I believe so. I don't know his exact address, but I'll take your word for it. You know, I'm pretty sure they got Obamacare up there. Well, most people have the Affordable Care Act in some part of the country, wherever they live, depending on uh, what their state opts in or opts out of. They've got at least some sort of option. So I I don't understand why he doesn't have health insurance that's taking care of this. What I don't understand is why, with all the different available options that a retired wrestler has to do shoot interviews, to do autograph sessions, that he hasn't found a way to make a few bucks even after his active wrestling career. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's maddening. It is, and it... It's maddening not just because it's happening to Perry Saturn, but because it keeps happening. And I asked this question on the news in the news update. Where is the safety net for wrestlers? Why does this happen to wrestlers after their careers are over? Because it's not like this is the first time. You and I, in all the years that we've been running this website together, Kevin, we've seen dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of wrestlers being reported as destitute and penniless. And this wasn't supposed to happen. WWE was supposed to put up this safety net so that wrestlers after their active wrestling career could go back to school and get a scholarship or could have, you know, if they have drug or alcohol dependency, they could get those issues taken care of. You know, what? whatever was ailing wrestlers after their wrestling career There was supposed to be the safety net. And it shouldn't just be up to WWE to do this. It should also be among the boys, as they say. They should be looking out for each other as well. Right, I absolutely agree. Um, But, you know, it's it's issues like this kind of combined with with the idea that, you know, we're not we're not we're never going to have unity among the boys until we can get wrestling unionized. And we're never going to get wrestling unionized because of the boys. You know, yeah, I mean, because it, you're right. Everybody's kind of if they don't want to go into a union because they feel like if they can sign an independent contract and get the best deal for them, screw everybody else. I'm te- I'm I am dead up serious about this. The best thing that could happen to professional wrestling is that professional wrestlers, if they do any kind of televised appearance, have to be registered with the Screen Actors Guild. And the main reason why is because if you do even one day of work as a member of the Screen Actors Guild on a television show of any kind, you get full health care coverage with that. And it's very affordable because it has to be because a lot of actors in Hollywood are struggling actors. They don't make a lot of money. Health insurance is vitally critical and... The Screen Actors Guild realized this decades ago, and that's why they were able to get this set up. It doesn't cost, it doesn't cost those who produce the TV shows that much more money to, to make that happen. So, you know. SAG AFTRA has a great union and has a great healthcare plan. And I know Abby and Jason were kind of railing on Mick Foley a little for talking about this because Mick Foley can afford hip surgery more than other people can. But Mm -hmm. at the same time, I kind of understand where Mick's coming from. Like, yeah, maybe I can afford it better than everybody else, but it'd sure be great to have that SAG-AFTRA. Yeah, exactly. So maybe that's what we need to do for Perry Saturn is get him a Screen Actors Guild card. I mean, he's got to qualify in some way. Wasn't he in the uh, Beyond the Bat movie? Maybe he can qualify on that basis. Well, you have in order to qualify, you have to do at least one television production each year. 
in order to qualify for the insurance. So if, if you're off TV for a whole year, you lose it until you appear back on TV again. Well, then I would think Foley would already be qualified for it because he's not only on Raw, but he has the Holy Foley show, which they're going to release a new season of it on WWE Network, or at least the second half of the season they already taped after the Royal Rumble. So between that show and being on Raw, I would think he's already qualified. Right. If WWE was a participating member of the Screen Actors Guild. Oh, yeah, there's the rub. Yeah, they don't, and they don't do any, and they don't do any of their, you know, quote unquote TV production in California. You know, they'll, they'll run shows there and record, but that doesn't technically count. You know, I think it's really ironic that they cannot be part of it, and yet they own a movie studio and produce films. That that doesn't seem like it should fly. Well, in the, in the film in the film part of it, if they're if they're actually like on WWE films and they're and they're producing in California, then yeah, that that does count. It I mean so, it, it is it is just so fucked up. It is so fucked up. Yeah, it just seems like there are too many loopholes for WWE to get around this. But then again, there always has been with them signing everybody to independent contracts that aren't really independent because. You can go work for anybody, but we control all your dates. So actually, you work for us. The, the the real the real simple solution, in a way, is Congress just needs to take care of this. Get socialized medicine going. Everybody's covered, no matter what. Done. Just done. Well, we're, good we're, luck with that. The incoming president wants to repeal Obamacare, so. We may not even have affordable health care, let alone any universal health coverage. We'll we'll get there. We're we'll we may have to drag them by their knuckles to get here, but we'll get there. Mm-hmm. Well, we can try, but in the we meantime, we shall overcome. We shall overcome, but in the meantime, we shall also talk about the other wrestling news that's going on in the world. There's more than just Perry Saturn's bad health. Unfortunately, there's also Fred Ottman's bad health. You may know him better as Typhoon or Tugboat or even the Shockmaster, but what we don't know is what's ailing him. All we know is that it put him in a hospital in Florida for the past few days. What are your thoughts, Kevin? Well, it's very, it's unfortunate. Uh, I, I hope he gets better. I hope they figure out what's going on. I do, too. And... We did, just in the last hour, get an update from his wife, Sheila. If I can pull that up here, I'm going to share that with you and our listeners, because it at least made things sound a little better than I had previously thought. Here's what she wrote. Thank you for all your prayers. Fred is awake this morning and talking. He is weak and sick, but he will be in a better in a few days. God is so good. Everyone has asked if they could call or come and send a card. Yes. He is at St. Anthony's Hospital in St. Petersburg, Florida, 145 Fifth Avenue North, 33701. So she said, at least indicating that he's on the mend from whatever's ailing him. And if you want to send him a card, you can. Awesome. Yeah, that is good news. But once again, this just strikes me as a case of how did it get to this point where we, all of a sudden, he just disappears off the map, and the next thing we know, he's in the hospital. It's like there should have been a little more of a network around him before it got to this point where he just completely vanished and wound up in a hospital. Yeah. But what are you going to do? And we've got some more positive news. Not everybody is sick and ailing these days. We have good news for Asuka. She's booked for... A fatal four-way at San Antonio, although you might actually argue that's bad news because if Michael Cole were here, he'd say she has a 75% chance of losing the title, even though those numbers are always bullshit. But she's defending against Peyton Hoyce, Nikki Cross, and Billy Kay. So you might say bad news for her, but I say good news because A, that means she's on the card for San Antonio, and B... I look forward to Asuka versus anybody, let alone in a Fatal 4-Way, so that's just three more women for her to kick around. I was going to say, it, it, it's three-on-one for Asuka? Well, <laughs> it's it's more like one on all three of her. I kind of figure it's like the speech that you get, uh, you've seen, oh, the movie, the name is on the top of my head. Um, the movie where the guy says, you don't understand, you're not in here with me. 
or what what's the exact line? Help me out here. I'm not in here with you. You're in here with me. You know the movie I'm talking about? The comic book movie? Not a clue. Oh shit. Um it's on the tip of my tongue. I'm I'm killing myself for not being able to think of it. I'm gonna Google the quote. Marvel DC or independent? I think technically now it's part of the DC universe. It, it just recently the Watchmen. That's what I'm thinking of. The ah, Watchmen. yeah, yeah. I've I've never seen the Watchmen. It, it's on it's on my list. I'll get to it one day. You actually should, because I know it's not like completely faithful to the book, to the comic book, to the uh, serialized adaptation, but it's it's still a fun movie. If you like comic book movies, it's a fun movie. And the character who says it, his name is Rorschach. And it's this great scene where they're going to try to shank him in the cafeteria in the lunch line. And it, it, it's just he immediately turns the tables on the scene by, well, I don't want to spoil it for you since you haven't seen it. Yeah. But basically, he gets the better of all these hulking, menacing inmates who are three times his size, but he's got three times the wits out with them. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm just thinking, if it's a three-on-one fight, then that's just slightly closer to a fair fight against Oscar. <laughs> that's about right. That's well put. So, more wrestling news. Uh, they had a tryout for a seven-foot-two-tall Indian basketball player named Satnam Singh at the WWE Performance Center. Oh. Once again, this strikes me as Vince McMahon thinking size matters. What is this, like, Kali 2.0 now? Yeah, and I think Kali's real name is also Singh. Isn't it Dalip Singh? Yeah, I mean, but 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 Singh's like a really common name. you know. That's true. Singh, it's like Patel. Smith. It's like Jones. Yeah. yeah. So I, I don't know if, if they can just keep hiring gigantic guys from any country and expect that they're going to be able to work. I mean, you got to have more than just being big. you got to actually be able to do something... You know, like Big Show, you got to be able to get in there and actually work and not just be big. Yeah. Hey, speaking of Big Show, have you seen some of the photos of him lately? Yeah, he's looking pretty jacked these days. What the he- where the what the hell happened to his waist? Yeah, he um, lost a bunch of pounds and gained a bunch of muscle. He's looking really good. I mean, he's looking olive oil thin in the middle. Yeah, I think he must be trying to look his very best for that match with Shaquille O'Neal at WrestleMania. He wants to be the fitter of the two of them when they get in the ring. Are are they really going to do that now? That is what the plans say. It's Wrestling Observer reporting it. It's everybody reporting it that Shaquille and Big Show are having a match at Mania this year. I mean, that's great. This match may be five years too late, but that's still (laughs) great. I mean, it, it, I mean, I mean, it at least really. has the sideshow freak attraction quality that you get people in the door to see a spectacle. That's what it's going to be. I mean, really, when they had that face off on Raw in, in that battle royal all those years ago, they should have took advantage of it right then. Because, you know, granted, I am never going to confuse Shaquille O'Neal with a great wrestler. But that said, he looked like. He was okay in the middle of the ring, and Big Show and all the other wrestlers sold well for him. It almost looked pretty credible. I think if you honestly had given him, you know, a couple of months in the ring and did it at WrestleMania the, the following year, that would have been just like a million dollars gold easily. I agree. Well, at least they started teasing the idea at WrestleMania and Dallas again. So even if it's five years too late... At least they put the seed in people's minds to bring it back, which is why they've had the perfect amount of time between then and this year's WrestleMania in Orlando for that to really sink in. And if you're going to do it, which I argued at the time, I was like, why not do it in Orlando since he played for the Magic for so many years? And it almost seems to me like somebody was listening when I said that. Yeah. (laughs) Speaking of which, WrestleMania announcements. We got a big one this week. Next year's WrestleMania is going to be in the Emerald City, New Orleans. They're coming back. It's only been a few years, but they're already going back, and they're picking a good time to do it because it's the tricentennial of New Orleans in 2018. I don't care. When are they coming back to Indianapolis? (laughs) I hate to say it, but probably not anytime soon. Not unless Indianapolis puts together a really good bid. I want to know why Indianapolis isn't putting in a really good bid then. They've got they've got a brand new world class stadium. 
You know, I'm sure they need more to fill it with than than Indianapolis Colts monster trucks and uh, and uh, DCI marching band challenges. You might think so, but it also is a factor of WWE looking at bids from cities that have the best weather in late March, early April. And I don't know if Indianapolis can do better than cities like Orlando and San Antonio and San Jose in terms of the weather. Well, the upside is it doesn't really matter what the weather is. You don't have to worry about putting your wrestlers out in the baking sun or risking a hurricane coming through. <laughs> that is a good point. You know, there, I mean, granted, there might be some, there might be some rain. Very occasionally, there might be some tornadic activity. Very rarely, there might be a snowstorm. You know, you know, even, you know, it's not unheard of. It, it's pretty rare, but not unheard of for Indianapolis. You know, you know, you you got to tell you I mean you got you got great wrestling fans in Chicago, Cincinnati, Louisville, St. Louis. Detroit. You don't think they take a road trip to Indianapolis? Come on. I think, they, I think they would, but I also think it's also about the other amenities too. When you're in a city like Orlando, there are a lot of other theme parks and attractions that sell the idea of coming there. Just like New Orleans has the French Quarter and Bourbon Street. You know, it's it's about what can you offer besides just the venue. I mean, he doesn't care about that. They book out the whole week, and, and with their strategy, they even try to book up every available re- venue where you can hold other wrestling events so other wrestling events aren't competing with them. <laughs> That's true, but I don't think they're going to be able to pull that off in New Orleans. And by the way, if I said Emerald City, I meant Crescent City, so my bad. Please don't put me at the torch and burn me because I screwed up the nickname. I meant to say Crescent City. You, you've, but... been, you've been watching that new show, haven't you? On NBC? Well, I want to. I actually thought it hadn't started yet. Has it already debuted? Uh, debuted last week. Ah, shit. So I'm already a week behind then. Well, I'll have to wait till it comes up on some sort of web broadcast for me to watch a replay. That's okay. Don't, no, I've not seen it yet. And don't feel bad about being a week behind. I've still not watched Wrestle Kingdom 11 yet. Oh, you know what? I could probably help you out with that. Uh, I've got a link that, unfortunately, I can't share publicly, but what? I I, what? I can no. in private give you no. a link to it. No, it's, no, uh, it's no, what? you no. We will not. We just had this discussion. Wrestle Kingdom week. No, I will pay my nine hundred and ninety nine yen when I'm ready to watch it. I do not have to steal from the mouths of hardworking New Japan pro wrestling wrestlers to get my fix. No, no, what you're not understanding is this wouldn't be theft because this is an actual screener that that I received for review purposes. So it's a private link, and sorry to the listeners that I can't share that, but I can share it with you. Uh, well, that's a, that's okay. I, I'm, I'm dedicated to paying my $9.99. Well, I'm certainly not going to fault you for that because it is among the best 999 yen I've ever spent on anything ever, especially that main event yeah if, by the way yeah if if, uh, if 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 wrestling observer is going to give it six stars you bet damn well better believe it's worth paying 9.99 and that's what i was going to ask you about actually is uh we didn't get too much of a chance to talk about this when the incredible huck william huckabee was on last week but do you think that it blows the scale to give six out of five stars to a match because everybody thought five was the limit but dave says he's done it at least once before I think it's all right to do it once in a, a decade or two decades. You know, mm-hmm. sometimes there really is a match that is just that damn good that it defies the that it defies everything. There, yeah, there's, I, there should be matches that break the standards and set new ones. And I think you're right. The last one was like 20 years ago. I think it was New Japan in the early 90s. So. That that is you know that's not very often to give something six stars. That's that seems to me like if people are really that upset about it, they should look at the previous precedent for it, and it was considered one of the greatest matches ever at the time. So perhaps then it's justifiable if it only happens like five times in a century. Yeah, I mean you know if you don't like it, fuck you. Start your own newsletter and set your own goddamn ratings. 
<laughs> that's absolutely true. Yeah, you can review and rate things any old way you want. You don't have to just listen to Dave Meltzer. Make up your own reviews, rate your own matches, decide what you like or not. And then when Dave Meltzer doesn't buy out your organization, you can, you know, go pound sand or something. I don't know. I guess so. So, is it about time to get Jordan Garber on for Jordan's Corner, or are we a little early on that? Um, I haven't seen him around yet, so we may have a few more minutes to burn here. All right, that's okay. I've got a few more news items we can address. The UK Championship belt has officially debuted on a show, a children's television program called Blue Peter that airs in the United Kingdom. Kev, have you seen what the new belt looks like yet? No, I have not. I think it looks okay, but uh Do we have a picture to, of it somewhere? Hard, yeah, I will uh, send you a link to the picture, let you get a better look at it. Uh, one second. You may have to entertain the people while I send you that link, so you can uh, just shoot the shit for a second while I get the link for you. Camp down, ladies, sing the song, do da, do da. The camp down track is five miles long, oh, we do da day. Gonna run all night, gonna <laughs> run all day. Bet my dollar on a bobtail rag, somebody bet on the day. <laughs> that wasn't exactly what I was expecting, but that works. <laughs> it was the very first thing that popped into my mind. I'm not gonna try to defend it. I don't have an explanation for it. It just works. All right. Well, I, I can at least send you the the design of the plate okay. in the middle of the belt. So that's a starting point. Here it is in the chat for you. Tell me what you think. All righty. Um... To me, it looks heraldic. It looks like a, a royal coat of arms. I think that's a classy design myself. Let me see a bigger picture. I think it's fitting. It mm. it 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 looks authentically British. Exactly. And for an all UK tournament, that is exactly what you'd want. The person who wins this title and wears a belt with that belt plate in the middle will definitely feel like an authentic United Kingdom champion. You know, you know, a little bit of bling to it, but I think mm. very stylishly done. It I like the multiple lions on it. I think that's a nice touch as well because lions always imply strength and nobility. So it, it definitely fits the mold of what they would want for a champion, someone who's who's strong and proud. Yeah, you you got a heraldic lion. You've got a you got a fighting stallion. You know, hell, it looks like a battle royal is about ready to break out right from the belt. <laughs> that's very true. Now, along with this, we also have the news that WWE wants to have other championships in other areas like they want to have a latin american championship and an asian championship and possibly some championship tournaments in other countries as well do you think this will muddy the waters or dilute the value of the uk title or do you think this works if they keep doing it over and over again i think i think it could work as long as whatever they do with this they don't just do it like once a year and don't have any surrounding programming with it. What I really hope to see is that behind this United Kingdom championship is some some regularly scheduled WWE shows, not just the one or two times a year WWE will sweep through, but something WWE sponsored on a fairly fairly regular basis that that features uh, some some UK talent. You know, so yeah. You, you know, want so, this to be a, a full time feature, not a part time thing. Right. I don't. I don't want it to be a gimmick. You know. I, you know. I want. I want it to be something that WWE fans in, in the UK can look forward to. And if they're going to do it in Latin America, you know, same thing there. Um, you mm-hmm. use this as an opportunity to start branching out and broadening your brand. You know, not not just the 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 USA product. Um, you know. Start working on a UK centric WWE product and a, you know, South American oriented WWE product, you know, where it's more than just, you know, what goes on in and around Stanton, Connecticut. That actually raises a question I want answered. Do you think if they do get this country or territory centric programming that it needs to be exclusively airing in that region, or do you think it should be available to all network subscribers in all regions? 
Oh, it should definitely be global. Okay, so you. I can mean, do because I because lo- I don't lo- local territories, but global spread. Right, absolutely, because I don't, you know, I I don't think it really costs WWE anything more to to do that. And honestly, it might drive up their subscriber numbers if they have these different area competitions and different area localized programs, because then the people in those markets will think. It's not just the United States being shoved down our throats. We've got our own little part of this, too. Right. You know, and I and I wouldn't object, you know, if you took some of the the B and C broadcast team people, you know, in the United States to to go ahead and do English commentary for for those that that are in, you know, non-English markets. So you're saying send like. uh, um, No, who, who would be a good B team? I'm trying to decide. Oh, I can't, I can't even keep track of who all is on there anymore. How, how about like Byron Saxton and, um, Tom, Tom Phillips? How about them? Yeah, sure. Hmm? That'd be a good beat. You know, and you, you don't even have to send them anywhere. They can, they can sit in an office in New York and, you know, and, and do the overdub. That's right. They can record it live from WWE studios. They can just watch a feed, which is basically how Jim Ross and Josh Barnett are doing the, play-by-play for the New Japan Wrestle Kingdom 11, coincidentally enough, is they're sitting in a studio and watching it and calling the action, but I have no doubt it's going to be an exciting broadcast when they do their own version of Wrestle Kingdom 11 starting tomorrow night. Really? Yeah, starting tomorrow night on Access TV. Wow. I mean, but... You know, it, I, I Does really... Does that bother I, you for some reason? You, you don't no, seem I, excited I, about that. It's, it's not that I'm not excited about that. It's just I really wish New Japan would get their act together with uh, what they're doing in the United States. Yeah, they could use a more consistent platform. I mean, it's nice that it's available on Access TV, but not everybody gets Access TV. And there's just not a lot of, uh, outside of the hardcore wrestling fan base, there's not a lot of awareness. Right, and and, and like's been pointed out in the past, you know, I think the biggest issue... Um, really is having an English commentary team that can really, really understands what the storylines are about and can relay that to English audiences as well and as competently as the Japanese commentary team does, Mm -hmm. you know, and, And you know, we, we know that, you know, Carino and, and Kelly, Kevin Kelly. yeah, Yeah. that, you know, they're only, they're only there a couple of times a year in new Japan, whenever ring of honor rolls in, and that's only going to last as long as Ring of Honor is rolling in. Who knows really how much longer that deal is going to last? What are they going to do when that stops? You know, and, you know, as- well, that is actually kept. That's one of the advantages of Barnett and Ross calling it for access is that they call it every single week. So it, even though Kelly and Carino are only there once or twice a year, it's OK, because if you listen to the J.R. and Barnett version, they're following the storylines and keeping up on all the wrestlers. Okay, but are are with with Wrestle Kingdom eleven, does that basically have them caught up within a couple of weeks of what's currently going on in New Japan? Yeah, but then that you're right, that would be a problem in and of itself is that they would need to stay with the current and stay up to date because previous to Wrestle Kingdom eleven they've been just about a year behind, so either they'd have to go back to being a year behind or they'd have to stay with it from the current point forward. I don't know what their plan is from that. Yeah, that's the main problem I have with the Access TV broadcast is, you know, I don't get Access TV, but last I heard, you know, you're you're talking like a full year behind, um, mm-hmm. you know, which is great for like a flashback show, but if you're trying to promote a, a product that's here and now, you know, you're, you're you know, what, what could very well end up being your second biggest market, it's not going to fly if the product's a year out of date. Mm-hmm. I guess for me, it's never been that big of a problem since I subscribe to the world now. So if I'm watching the current stuff in Japanese and I'm watching the older stuff with an English commentary team, I feel like it's a good balance. But I realize that's not everybody else. Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, it, it you know, it's great for those who, who keep up with New Japan World. But as we know, you know, it's not that big of an audience yet. And, and for me, I think this is more of a growing concern um, in the next couple of months, as as the the G one climax is finally going to make its U S debut. 
although we have gotten some clarification on that, this is going to be like a, a G1 preview. It's not going to actually be part of the tournament. Oh, okay. It's just going to be shows that are like showcasing the talent of the G1 before the G1 begins. Okay. But still, I mean, this is, this is going to be a major show for, for New Japan here in the United States. Mm-hmm. And hopefully they will support it accordingly and get it out on all of the available platforms. But we'll just have to wait and see how they handle that. In the meantime, I think we're ready for Jordan. Ah, uh, has he showed up yet? Well, if he hasn't, then that might be the end of our show this week. Is this the end of the show, fans? Does Jordan Garber make his appearance? Or is he simply a snake under the boot? Hmm. All right, like Jordan has message, and he says he is, he is ready to go. All right, let's bring him in then. Hello, Jordan. What's up, my man? Hey, man, not much. I was just in the process of making myself a nice chicken teriyaki stir fry. Um, it's not a vegan cook like Jason Harlan's, but it still is pretty good. It's compliments. It's it's store brand, but I am looking forward to it. I had a long day, so I'm glad to be here. Yes, and we're glad to have you back for another edition of Jordan's Corner. So, what's going on in the world of Jordan J. Garber this week? You know what? Honestly, that's one of those funny questions everyone asks, and everyone's going to laugh at this. I don't even know. It's been... the. I'm not here to... I'm not going to go into detail and grieve, but this week's been rough. Rough, so rough, I don't even remember most, most of the days. But there's one thing that always keeps Jordan Garber alive. And that is professional wrestling. And that is what I am here to talk about. What do we have coming up, you guys? That is the question you guys should be asking. Jordan Garber now with none other than Jesse Neal will be this Tuesday. And then the following week, we have Sam Houston. Remember him, Steve, from the good old days? Absolutely, yeah. Brother of Jake the Snake Roberts. Sure is. Sure is. And he definitely, he definitely has a lot of stories to tell, so... Um, what will happen when Jordan Garber talks with these legends? Find, well, Jesse Neal from Tiana. Y- 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 you guys know what I mean. It's yeah. going to be a few good shows. As for the week of wrestling, what did you guys think of Wrestle Kingdom and Kenny Omega's vision of wrestling? I really enjoyed it. And uh, sorry we didn't get a chance to talk to you about it last week when we had Huck on. But, man, I was thrilled with that match when I watched it live. I think it earned the 6 out of 5. I thought it built up tremendously. It didn't even seem like it could be as good as it was, and it somehow managed to top that because at 6 in the morning, I was ready to go to bed. I was ready to call it, but they kept me with it for all 40 minutes. And Actually, I think I could have been happy with it, even if it ended a little earlier than that, but I won't say that they faltered in the execution by going for a full 46 I think very few wrestlers could have pulled off what they did in that 46 minutes. They did some insane shit, and they made it work. Exactly. And think about it this way. Kenny Omega is from this very cold place right now. I think it's like minus 40 Celsius outside right now. Winnipeg, Manitoba. So it makes Winnipeg look good. It makes our scene look good. And Kenny Omega... You know what? Where do you want to see him? Do you want to see him in WWE? Do you want to see him in TNA? Or do you think he's not, he's worth better than that? Because think about it. I'd rather see him be a star and huge star again in Japan where he puts on amazing quality matches combined with great entertainment rather than being in these mid card matches with, say, back in the day with Trent Beretta. You know what I mean? Well, I can go two ways about it. I'll give you both sides of the coin, Jordan. There's one side of me that selfishly says, I want him to be in New Japan because I want him to be the leader of their future. I want him to carry them forward into the global market and be the guy that can bring New Japan to everyone, everywhere, in every territory. I think he is an ideal candidate for that because he's over with the Japanese crowd, but he's, as you noted from Canada, from Winnipeg, so he can translate that to English-speaking audiences as well. He can wrestle the New Japan style with an American voice and really transcend, and I would love to see him get the ball and run with it. But if I'm not being selfish about it, and Kenny Omega has to take his own best interests at heart, if he gets a really sweet offer from WWE where they're going to pay him a lot of money, 
and put him on television right away and he doesn't languish in developmental for months and months, why shouldn't he take that offer? Why shouldn't he do what's best for him? If, if that means I still get to see Kenny Omega, how mad about it can I be? Because he's already one of my favorite wrestlers. So if he takes a good money offer and goes to WWE, selfishly, I may miss him in New Japan, but realistically, I'll still get to enjoy his work. Exactly. But no matter where you see Kenny Omega, you know he's going to be a star. And, you know, it's just, it's a matter of time. And that, that's what we can, yeah. You know, like I said, let him do his thing. Let's see where it goes. It's definitely going to be interesting. He said he's no longer with Japan. Where is he going to go? I'm I'm gearing towards maybe Mexico, or maybe he has something hidden in the w, in a deal with the WWE. You know, wrestling people can lie to Dave Meltzer. Not everything that everyone says is true. Some of those things that you've seen on the internet is not true. Some of those things I've reported is not true. Just like certain articles, some are not a hundred percent accurate. He might be in talks with WWE. Only Kenny Omega knows, and, well, and, and it's just a matter of time. We, we can say this much, though. He is under contract with New Japan through the rest of the month, so if they're having talks right now, if he's talking to WWE, it's not through official channels. It's, it's back doors and off the record and through friends of friends. He wouldn't officially enter negotiations with WWE until February 1st. But he could still renew with New Japan any time between now and the end of the month. Exactly. The question is, guys, um, I'm guessing Abby and Jason would prefer to see Kenny Omega in New Japan. Uh, I do I do believe you as well, Steve, would like to see Kenny Omega in New Japan. Um, are you guys, do you guys agree with my statement? Do you, would you rather see him in WWE, or am I wrong here? Like I said, I think I can live with it either way. But selfishly, I would want him to stay in New Japan. But as long as I still get to see him, I'll take him either way. I I think he needs you to know, stay. I think he needs to stay exclusive to New Japan, and I think New Japan needs to make sure he's paid the money to stay exclusive. That is true. They're going to have to match if WWE puts an offer on the table. They're going to have to match it or beat it. You know, I mean, I, I I figured that you know they might have done that. You know, I could see them not doing that for AJ Styles. You know, because he's, you know, he, he did really good in New Japan, but he's not a quote unquote New Japan guy. Um, and it's really unfortunate in a way that they let, uh, you know, others go. But, you know, there has to be something exclusive for New Japan. And, and Kenny Omega, I think, is definitely one of those guys who needs to be exclusive. He's come up through the company through the bottom, you know, from nothing till something, you know, that From has that has to remain important. Huh? Yeah, he came exactly. up. Where story about Kenny Omega is he started out in Winnipeg at Chalmers Community Club in this neighborhood called Elmwood, where I partied a few times, and he started from the bottom right. at River City Wrestling, and now look at him. Right, you're, exactly. You're right, and I'm com- completely agreeing with your statement. And Kevin's right too that he started at the bottom in New Japan as well. He worked his way up as a as one of the young boys, and then just became the cleaner, and then worked his way up from being the cleaner in the Bullet Club to being the ace of Bullet Club, and then worked his way up from being their ace to being the company's ace, to being a top face of the, of the entire company. How cool would it be to have, like, a gaming session with, like, Kenny Omega? I would play so much, like, Street Fighter with him. <laughs> as long as we could decide who gets to be Ryu, because I want to throw the Hadouken, and so does he. If we had a bottle of Jack Daniels in the middle with the video game, some chips and a few beers and maybe, maybe some, I don't know, something, it would be pretty awesome. <laughs> Who wouldn't show Kenny Omega? Uh, All right. As for uh, that, what else I saw, yeah, I need to ahead. ask you guys a few more questions. I'm sorry. I love my on-air time. Um, Ron Smackdown, your guys' thoughts. I'm, in- uh, I'm interested in this James Ellsworth and Carmelo duo. I'm uh, only going to comment on Raw because I didn't see SmackDown, but Raw, the I was, it had good moments. I'll put it that way. Shawn Michaels doing his thing with Enzo and Cass against Jinder Mahal, Rusev, and Lana. I got a kick out of that. That was a fun segment. And Undertaker returning, even though Stephanie McMahon thought he wasn't going to, and she was going to hold Mick Foley personally accountable for the 
failure of the Undertaker to show up when he did show up and said, I answer to no one. That was the perfect Undertaker segment. Other than his very weird little noise that he made at the very end after he said, rest in peace. I didn't know what that was. I don't ever want to hear him do that again. But other than that, perfect segment. So it, it had good moments. What's he back for, though? Like, what's he going to be back for? He's in the Royal Rumble. That's, that's what he's back for. He entered himself into oh. the 30-man elimination. And guess what? He's going to win. He's going to no. win. Just like it happened. No. Actually, he's not because he's not in the title picture for WrestleMania. That's already leaked out. Oh, yeah. Eh? Yeah, so so he's not going to win the Rumble. But that that's okay, though, because just the fact of him being in the Rumble makes it a bigger match. Exactly. In fact, it's getting kind of big overall when you look at the stars that are going to be in the Rumble this year. Undertaker, Brock Lesnar, Bill Goldberg. I mean, when have we had a Rumble match? Like Why don't we bring him in? I don't think we need Goldberg. I think Goldberg is enough. We don't need Goldberg, too. Or what about me? What about the Garber Snake? Do you think he could enter the Rumble? Do you think he could outlast the 49 other competitors? Uh, I, I say this without any disrespect, Jordan, but you would last even less time than Bushwhacker Luke. Well, you know what, Big Show? My open challenge is still... I'm just kidding. I'm not going to challenge the Big Show. That would be insane. He's probably a cool guy. I'd probably have a few beers with him. He's probably really chill. Yeah. Anyways, I'm... what else was I going to plug? Um, Lucha Underground. I still want to ask you guys. I'm so sorry. I'm in a very conversational mood about professional wrestling because you know what? With what's going on, it's definitely helped me a lot. I want to talk about Lucha Underground. Then I'll plug all my stuff and I will let you all go. Lucha Underground, the round table gimmick. Hmm. I, I don't know if I can comment on the current week's show because I didn't catch it this week. Although I do know they're going on hiatus for like three or four months. They're they're having their like mid season break. Are they actually? Yeah, they're they're taking time off. I think they're trying to extend out their season. I did not know that. They, they taped like forty episodes all at once, and they don't want to burn through all of them, so. They're going on a hiatus for a little bit, so they can air the rest of the episodes later, and then tape more in the fall. Yeah, and you know what? With wrestling nowadays, it's so hard to watch like every single product. It's like either one or the other sometimes, because mm-hmm. it's like it takes up on hours and hours of time. Unless you have free time, you can watch all the wrestling you want. But there's like so much, and it's like you can't catch up to everything. And yeah. I was very misinformed that Lucha Underground was still not running any. Well, it, they're well, on a they- break right now. They're going to be on a break. I don't know if the break started this week or it starts next week, but they're definitely taking a mid-season break right around now. And that's why I said I can't comment on it because I didn't see what it this, this week. So I don't... All-Star game? <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know if it aired on Wrestling night. I have to check my DVR. There's no off-season the... of pro wrestling. At the, at the same time that Lucha Underground is usually on, so is WWE NXT, which, like you said, you can't always watch everything. Sometimes it sits on the DVR for a week or two. You know, I do got to tell you guys a funny story, too. You're on Thursday Night AMP, and I don't know if you guys saw it. I made CWE headlines at Rookie Sports Bar. CWE, I think everyone here has heard of CWE. It's a top wrestling company in Canada. And Jordan Garber did a Jordan Garber got assaulted by Jacob Creed. He got body slammed. An innocent Jordan Garber during the snake pit. So what happened was, is it was Kevin Cannon. He was having his match against Shadow Extreme, who saved me after. And I, guess who hit Kevin Cannon with the center? Jordan Garber. And then I was celebrating with the return of Shane Madison, local wrestling legend, had a few beers, and then I gave him the center. The Garber snake left his mark. So... You guys uh, should check that out when you have a chance. Oh, definitely I will, Jordan. And uh, let's give everybody the cheap plugs, too, so they can keep up and see it themselves when you share the links on social media. Yes, indeed, for plugs. I am going to be very more conversational. I've always noticed I, I reflected back on 2016, and it's like, okay, I say, I think I need to say a little more, and I'm going to say a little more. I'm going to be very educated. So stay tuned for that, and to stay tuned on that, follow me on Twitter at Jordan J. Garber. My Facebook page is Jordan J. Garber, and my Instagram page is Jordan J. Garber. If you're hanging out, chilling, partying or something, get me on Snapchat, JordanZone17. And I think I'm on to the next Jordan Garber now, 
like I said earlier, is with Jesse Neal next Tuesday, 10.30 p.m. Central. And then I will, the following day, stay tuned on my Twitter, I will be on VOC Wrestling Nation podcast. More to be announced soon, including XOW Fusion. There's so much. Just go on my Twitter. It'll, I'll, it'll, give, all, it'll give you all the information you need. Absolutely. So, Jordan, thanks as always for being on Jordan's Corner. We got an extended edition this week, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thoroughly enjoyed it as well. And as the, at the same time we had that segment, I started making my chicken teriyaki. And while the segment was over, it was finished. One of the best dinners I've had. <laughs> well, that's just perfect then. So everything timed out just the way you would want. So let's wrap it up on that note. Kevin, do you want to give any plugs before we end the show? Uh, listen to uh, all the shows on the Angry Marks Podcast Network. Uh, we uh, did a new episode of Raw Reaction. Yes, actually, we two weeks in a row, we got episodes of Raw Reaction up. Uh we we did it recorded it Tuesday night uh, because we had the national championship football game on Monday and everybody wanted to watch that instead of Raw. I don't blame them. And uh, you know Tuesday night we did not record an episode of the Wrestling Nerdcast because uh, per the request of our special guest we recorded that Wednesday afternoon and got that up. That special guest is Raven, the ECW original himself. Uh, it was a quick but uh, good interview you should check that out as well um check out everything else that we're doing every week that's right raw reaction the wrestling nerdcast glove up or shut up thursday night amp over the top radio impact implosion we have a full lineup of shows right here at angrymarks.com and don't forget we also bring you special reports like aria Whitner's wwnxt every wednesday night and thursday morning so even if we don't always have recaps for every show, we have podcasts that cover a lot of those things, too. So, plethora of available material. And our huge archives, too. We've got 10 years' worth of shows, Kev. How many websites can boast that? Um, not many. <laughs> no, not many at 